What you doing? Are you gonna roll over? Hmm? I, I am going to learn him to roll over. You're gonna teach him? Yeah. Are you ready? No, don't do it. But, but I'm gonna teach him how to roll. No, no, he, he'll learn on his own. Do another one. Good. Good Good job. <laughs> and this is called I Love You. Let me see. Oh, wow. I love you. Do you remember how to say I love you in Chinese? Wow. I need. Say it again. Well, I need Papa. That's Papa? Who's this? Well, I need Mama. Ah, thank you. Dear God, thank you for this. Thank you for this family in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. Sorry you feel sick. Yeah. Oh. Hopefully it doesn't get worse. It's no. I watch Daddy watching the radio. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about uh, Mother's Day. Now yesterday was Mothering Sunday as it's called in this country and what's interesting for us here as a multicultural, multi-race um, family is that the situation gets kind of complicated <laughs> because we have uh, three Mother's Days, essentially. So there's the one we're most used to because we grew up in the U.S. is the, is the American Mother's Day. And that is in um, the middle of June sometime. And so that's the one we're used to celebrating, but we don't live in the U.S. I haven't lived in the U.S. for the past three years. So the second Mother's Day, the one I got used to celebrating as well as the American one was the Nicaraguan Mother's Day. And that's at the end of May. So I would have to remember that uh, my mom and my grandma living in, in Nicaragua, I had to give them a call, send them flowers or whatever um, at the end of May. And then lastly, the third Mother's Day is the one we now uh, go through in, in England, which is on Mothering Sunday. And I think 
It's supposed to be what, the second Sunday of March? I don't know how you determine it, but it's in March. So you have one in March, you have one in May, and you have one in June. So there are three different Mother's, Mother's Days that we uh, celebrate. It's a real challenge. <clears throat> Mother's Days, whichever country you're in, is more significant than the average person who may have grown up with a um, with a stable mother. I'll say, I won't delve too much into it, but uh, by the time I was four, uh, when my brother was born, there's two of us, when my brother was born, I was four, and my mother became severely depressed. And within a year or two of that depression, uh, she became schizophrenic. Uh, a form of schizophrenia in which um, high anxiety, uh, hearing voices, seeing things, and being suspicious of everyone um, to the point of, you know, attacking people preemptively so that they wouldn't harm her. So the, the state of the art of medication at the time was um, a drug called Haldol and that pretty much took away all the highs and all the lows and made her non-functioning, um, just flatline. She would spend all her time in her room, um, not very responsive, not say a single word. So from about the age of four onward, um, I had a pretty difficult, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are people who grew up without mothers. And I suppose that's worse in a sense than growing up with a, a sick mother. But it was, it was a big challenge and I had long, term ramifications on my brother and I. But as drugged as she would be and as sick as she would be, um, she did the best she could. Um, and within the realm of the possible, she was an adoring and committed mother. And it's, it's easy sometimes to forget that, to forget that she had severe barriers and severe burdens to carry that um, one might say prevented her from from being the best mom she could be but i have very fond memories of her even though she was zonked out taking us to school trying to cook us a meal and it just didn't work out um, trying to clean once in a while and not working out. So you have, you have evidences of, of significant efforts, I'm sure, on her part to overcome that schizophrenia. And um, so Mother's Day is really an amazing day in that my brother and I kind of look back and think it's stunning that we made it out of there, out of our childhood. Um, with a sense of normalcy and, and as functioning individuals. Well, anyway, the point being is that it's a bittersweet day for my brother and I always. It's bittersweet in that we remember what she did and what she was capable of doing and how far, you know, the little bit that she was able to do was actually a great deal. But we also remember all the great challenges. Um, there was one particular instance where I think I was like nine or 10 and she just decided to go for a walk, um, just left the house, didn't tell anyone. She just walked out and I saw her and I followed her and I kept telling her to come back home uh, and she wouldn't. Uh, we must have walked something like five to 10 miles and I managed to get onto a pay phone and call collect to my dad at the house and uh, sort of describe where we were and he, and he came and picked her up and she was hospitalized. So she went through, you know, different periods of life where she was hospitalized in a, in mental hospitals. And, you know, you, as a little boy, as a little kid, and you think, you know, what's wrong with your mom? Is it your fault? Things like that. So it's very challenging. So Mother's Days are very intense. But um, 
that's given me a context and a framework to understand Lillian and appreciate her in a way that is different. You know, my, Lillian has given me the wonderful gift of being a father and not just a father, but a father to two absolutely beautiful and wonderful children. I probably fail at encouraging and reminding her how wonderful she is every day and how lucky I am to have her as the mother to my children. So this is just, I didn't tell her I was making this video, she'll see it, but um, this is just me and I'm going to summarize a little bit what, what she means um, on this mothering um, Sunday and this Mother's Day. As you guys can tell, you seasoned watchers, viewers of our channel, she's absolutely stunning and beautiful. I don't, I'm punching <laughs> way above um, my weight category, as you say, just from a looks category. Um, but, you, you know, waking up to a work of art every day is, is incredible. Uh, but that's looks fade. Um, that's not the be all and end all. It's nice, but it's not the be all end all. She's clearly um, very talented. She um, plays the violin. Our most viewed video now is her cover of the Greatest Showman song. It's now our most viewed video. Towers of gold are still too little. These stars could hold the world, but it'll never be at all. Never be at all for me. But talent also is something that you're born with in a sense. Talent, you, I'd think of it as something that you inherit. So the people that are successful are the people that make the most use of their talent by working hard with it. And she's incredibly hardworking, not just with her talent, all the years she spent perfecting it and mastering it, but in everything she does, so in the house. Um, I don't know how she does it, to be honest. The um, Our son, sleeps in three hour intervals and uh, she finds that she can only bear sleeping through a period where she's woken up twice so she'll go to sleep like between 11 and midnight and be woken up at three that's one wake up and then be woken up at six that's the second wake up and then she'll eventually wake up between seven and eight she's in bed between seven and eight hours but she's woken up twice and for a period, each of those wake-ups is about, I would say, maybe half hour to feed and tend to the baby. So three-hour blocks, maybe. Six hours, maybe, a night. Three-hour blocks. I, I just can't function. And then she gets up and she does uh, cooking for the kids in the morning. For, and then she, um, for breakfast and for lunch. And then does the dinner when I get home. And she's doing laundry and here in the UK in our in our place that means hanging laundry as well as washing um, she's filling the the dishwasher putting those away mending my clothing if it needs mending making dresses for our daughter selling things through um, she has a host of small businesses she's a birthing educator she gives voice lessons she sells objects, she makes things, crocheting and sells those things. Um, she cuts my hair. You know, she's a powerhouse. She's a warrior and I, I still don't know how I ended up in, <laughs> in this position. Because my, I guess my love life leading up to that was a complete disaster. You know how they say that you tend to date people that have 
um, similar traits to your uh, mom or dad. So I, I dated a host of, of women that needed fixing and I thought I could fix them and it was my role to fix them and I was, you know, a superman and a superhero. And I just didn't work out. It just, um, you know, that's the sort of thing that only God can fix people. And I was crushed under the burden of trying to fix people. So finally, I think God said, you know, I'm going to give you someone that um, is, you're not going to think you need to fix because she's in a good place. It's been great. It's been wonderful. Um, but lastly, and most importantly, she's so, um, she's so patient and loving. I mean, I have so many flaws. So the framework of my own upbringing in which you could say that my mother was 180 degrees different. She wasn't able to exhibit incredible capability. She wasn't able to um, nurture in the way that uh, Lillian does. And it makes me realize and appreciate um, what a gift Lillian is to me and to the children. And I urge you, um, you know the saying that um, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. With all the battle of the sexes and women being taught to be men, essentially, to stop having children, to pursue lives outside um, that, that do not involve the nurturing of children, and basically the, the eradication of how women have been through the millions of years of human existence. If you have a mother that nurtured you and cultivated the best that's in you, then say that to her because it means so much to them because they sacrifice so much for the project of your character and of your conduct and outlook on life and future prospects and um, you know it's no joke that they from gestation to the pain of birthing and to the investments that they make in you it means the world and simple expressions, simple days um, set out in the year to express that is the right thing to do. So to all you mothers out there who um, have given so much to your children and have raised your children and have put up with difficult men, <laughs> uh, difficult fathers, thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. The fate of the world rests in your hands.